So to begin, I need to log into my workstation. Uh, and, oh, shoot, I got the password wrong. But wow, that animation looks so familiar. So let me log in. And this, this system's a little slow. It's over 30 years old. Um, so let me boot some things up here. I made this little timer app uh, because this is supposed to be like a lightning talk. And I want to make sure that I can keep good time. So it's supposed to be between 5 and 10 minutes. So I'll put in 7. Start that. Move this down here. And then I can open Project Builder. So anyone in the audience use Project Builder for Mac OS X before Xcode, before it changed the name Xcode? OK, I see some hands. Um, so I don't know if you've ever seen this before, but it's pretty much the same as it is for the Mac. And last up, I'm going to open my slides in everyone's favorite Mac OS X web browser, OmniWeb. Anyone used OmniWeb back in the day? Ah, oh, yes, I even got some applause. OK, please open quickly. <laughs> so close that. All right, so I got my slides here. So welcome to my talk. Um, I'm really happy that Paul Hudson gave us a brief intro to 1990s GeoCities websites, because uh, this system's 30 years old. It doesn't know what JavaScript or CSS are. Uh, so this is pure handcrafted HTML. So this talk is called I Built an App for Next Step or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love Objective-C. I won't uh, cover myself that much, uh, but my name is Jeff. Uh, as they said, I'm from San Francisco, and I live in Tokyo now. Tim and I, our wonderful MC, used to work together at Mercari here in Tokyo. So uh, anyway, let's move on. So let's take a little stroll back to 1996. And I built an app. Um, and it's a calculator app. Uh, but it ended up looking more like Solver or Math Notes, actually, that Apple just released, uh, than a regular calculator app. Um, but because Next and Apple merged, and NS in all of our favorite programming names comes from Next Step, um, I actually made a calculator app for every version of OS X. Uh, and so this is the exact same app with the exact same nibs running in Jaguar. Uh, I updated the nib, though, to have the brushed metal appearance for the, the controller, so anyone that misses the brushed metal can feel nostalgic. So it started as a simple proof of concept. Can I build an app for Next Step? Uh, and then I decided to push myself and see if I could get the basics like syntax highlighting, math expression detection, and solving and carry over of the previous solution. Uh, so let me give you a quick demo of this app. So I'm going to open the project. OK, and close that. So I'm going to open the debug window and the build window. And this is quite modern. So even basic things like, do you want to build this for Intel or Next? are in here. So this is like the Apple Silicon Intel checkbox you have now. I'm going to click Build. Compiling. It's incremental build, so it should be quick. Ah, and we got the chime that tells me it built. So I'm going to click Debug. And so far, it looks pretty basic. I have some logging. So here's the app. Um, so this looks like a normal text editor. But I can type in 2 plus 2 and type in the equal sign, and it solves it immediately. Um, I can also carry over the previous solution, like I said. So I can say times 2 equals, and it says it's 8. And it supports order of operations. So I can say 5 plus 5 times 2 equals 15. And put parentheses around it. And it equals 20. So 
That's a very basic demo, uh, but it does have, it is a normal like Mac style application, so I can open some documents. And here you can see how error handling works as well, like divide by zero. Uh, and I went a little overboard and, oops, I don't want the info panel, I can close that. Um, I made it fully themable so you can choose all the colors and all the fonts. And for you dark mode people, I even made you a dark mode. So, it has pretty much everything. <laughs> yes, I got the applause. Okay. Uh, the, and I wanted to show you debugging, so I set a breakpoint on copy. So I'm going to do Command C, and I'm going to go back to Project Builder, and you can see the breakpoint was hit. And I can go next, 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 and I can take like this plain string variable and I can print object, and it pastes, it shows in the console that string. So let me continue, and I will quit the app, and go back to slides. So this uses an entirely standard Cocoa approach. Um, it uses regular expressions to detect the math. Uh, it uses NS decimal number to do the arithmetic, NS attributed string to do the styling and store the metadata, NS text attachment, oops, NS text attachment uh, renders the solution in line, and then NS text view does all the hard work of rendering it for me, um, and then NS user default stores all those preferences I showed you. So this is pretty mind blowing to me, it's all the same. So all of this stuff was created in the 90s, and then bought by Apple, turned into Mac OS X, and then ported to iOS. So this does have some missing features. Uh, I won't go into all of them now, uh, but the big one that I think everyone's worried about is there's no automatic reference counting. Um, so you have to do manual retain and release. Um, but actually, this turned out to be not very difficult at all. I thought it would be really bad. But here's a normal Objective-C method. Uh, this inserts these characters in the range. I use this like for debugging. And this is with automatic reference counting. And here's the exact same method without automatic reference counting where I insert these auto releases. So you can see it doesn't actually change the code that much in a lot of cases. Um, and if you run this in modern Xcode, uh, it will actually tell you when you make a mistake. So here I forgot the auto release. And so Xcode will tell you you leak the object. So it really is amazing that Project Builder and, and uh, Next Step has all the same features we have in Xcode today. Interface Builder, Breakpoints, Debugging, Fat Binaries, NS Bundle, and Localization. Uh, so I think the question is, uh, but why? Um, so I, for me, it was mostly a learning exercise. Um, so I do think there's a lot of valuable stuff you can learn here, and everything is much simpler. So when you debug Cocoa methods and, and the you know, responder chain and all this stuff, it's all way simpler than in the modern versions. Also, as a side benefit, the documentation, unlike now, is absolutely gorgeous. So I'll just open one here. Uh, so this is a text overview, so if you want to know how a text system works, um, look at this document. Look at how much explanation there is. Diagrams, like, wow. Could you imagine getting this for a modern API from Apple? No way. So it's also fun. I mean, it was a fun project. I do plan to upgrade this from Jaguar to Tiger, Snow Leopard, until I can run it on my modern Mac. Like I said, the code doesn't actually change that much. It's like mostly updating nibs and things. Um, so yeah, that's the end of my talk. I do have all the slides and the source code. Everything is open source, so scan that QR code. 
Uh, and did everyone get the QR code? Because I do have one, one last slide. I really hope I don't get in trouble for this slide because uh, it's kind of unrelated. But uh, I need your help. Um, I have a good friend here in Tokyo. Her name is Atsuko Tsuchiya. And she is looking to make a career change into software development. She's a pro professional dental hygienist for 15 years. Uh, she's taking a six month intensive full stack boot camp, bilingual, and she's doing the boot camp full time with work full time, which is why she's not here today. Um, so, if please, if you uh, hire junior devs or if you have any advice for Otsko, I'm really trying to help her get that first tech job, which is always the hardest one. So let me go back, make sure people have the QR code. And that's my talk. Thank you so much.